Hi, welcome to the thrift shop. Today we're going to talk about IMR acoustic IEMs. So today I want to talk about one of the best things I've personally ever heard, uh, which are IMR acoustics in-ear monitors for those uh, who aren't used to hearing IEMs. Um, they are uh, a company with uh, a little bit of a, a jaded past, I guess. Um, I really found them through drop.com. Uh, um, you know, they uh, sell uh, audiophile kind of uh, electronics and, and things of that nature and uh, been up and down over the years but um, I noticed them on there and every comment on drop was how bad the owner is um, apparently there was some history with uh, the owner of IMR acoustics with a product on Indiegogo that didn't go so well so um, there are a lot of people that just dis dislike the the owner for whatever reason, uh, I don't think it's right. Um, I have no affiliation with IMR Acoustics. Um, I own these, I bought these, so um, it's my opinion. Um, so on drop, the uh, the one that I noticed was the IMR uh, A10, or I think it's R2 A10 Red, uh, something like that. Um, it retailed on drop for $225. Um, now the uh, IMR, R2 Red is a hybrid driver system. So you have a 13.5 millimeter uh, A10 driver with a PZO ceramic uh, driver, which I assume is doing the, the treble. Um, the R2 comes with five nozzles and six dampers. So you can totally change the sound characteristic of this to, to suit your needs. You know, I previous to IMR, I thought that you basically um, want to get a product that the designer intended for you to hear. You don't want to make any changes and IMR totally changed my belief in that system um, because you can change the sound day to day um, depending on your mood if you feel so inclined. Um, so amazing. Uh, the R2 Red um, has a frequency response of 10 to 40,000 Hertz. Um, I don't know why they even want to state something like 40,000 Hertz. Uh, I know I can't hear above 15,000 Hertz. So, um, for whatever reason, um, they feel that that's a factor. Um, it does come with, uh, two cables. It comes with, uh, a single ended, um, 3.5 millimeter and also a 2.5 millimeter balanced cable. Very nice cables, by the way. I think some of the best that I've, uh, ever had. And I've had a lot of, uh, IEMs. Uh, the packaging is really nice. Um, this is the uh, the red right here. Um, very nice product. Um, it does come with uh, you know a few things in the box. Um, comes with a nice uh, certified card for you know in case someone's trying to rip them off. It does come with this nice nifty frequency response graph, and I don't pay a lot of attention to frequency response graphs. But it's there and it tells you what the nozzles do um, and you can kind of see from a base standpoint what nozzle, what damper you use um, to how these things work. Um, I don't think that, uh, number one, uh, I own two of these, so we're going to talk about the second one. Um, <clears throat> both of them have the same card in them, so there's no way that the frequency response is the same for both. I don't know, but uh, I don't think it follows this um, from what I hear. But, um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't want to talk about the sound characteristics yet. We're going to talk about the second unit I got. 
which is the IMR R3 Halcyon. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's spelled A H A L Y C Y O N, I believe. Um, it's no longer uh, up on the IMR Acoustics website. It was released in March of 2020. Uh, I think it was around $900. I got both mine used, so uh, I didn't pay retail. Um, but the uh, R3, um, I'm going to call it H. R3H is a flagship, um, especially for IMR. And I think in the world of, of IEMs, it certainly would be a, considered a flagship. It's a triple hybrid. It has the new 15 millimeter A10 driver. Uh, with the PZO ceramic drivers and two electrostatic drivers in it. So it's quite stacked um, as far as uh, performance goes. Um, and, you know, um, you can find these in the open market. Uh, I found mine on eBay. A heck of a deal and uh, probably the best money I've ever spent, quite honestly. Um, IMR um, has recently um, released what they're calling Pro. If you go to their website, you'll see as a Pro. Um, the IEMs look pretty neat, um, so I'm not sure what IMR is up to. Uh, IMR, if you want to reach out, send me some units for review. I gladly review them. Uh, I think they're probably the best, literally the best thing I've ever heard. Um, I don't care. I've got Zoo speakers and you name it. I've tried a lot of things, and this is game changing uh, for audio for me. Um, it may not be for you, but it is for me. Uh, so I think I need to start with a story. Um, so I ordered um, the uh, R2 Red from eBay. It was delivered. Um, it shows up at my house, uh, ironically, the same time I'm going to mow grass. Um, not the most ideal situation to um, use an IEM, but uh, I was so excited that, that I just wanted to use them. So I put them in, uh, connected through the uh, iPhone using the dongle deck, the Apple dongle deck. So nothing really high end, uh, lossy music, uh, certainly nothing high end. Um, so I start mowing grass and uh, so I was listening to Lamb of God, Memento Mori song. And um, that song is pretty heavy, uh, but I do like it to check out um, bass performance. Um, and, and I had heard this song many times on Bluetooth, uh, uh, in-ear monitors and a uh, variety of things, but again, it's lossy. Um, not that good. So I start mowing and um, through through the iPhone um, loud background noise and the song starts off slow and then uh, um, it really kicks in I don't know maybe 30 40 seconds in and I literally had to stop mowing grass because I heard things that I've never heard before um, just totally blown away with the uh, double bass hits that were happening that sounded like one on everything else I listened to. Uh, so the clarity that I could get, even though it was lost music, was uh, totally incredible. So it's totally, it's one of these products that you can't unhear. Um, and all you want to do is relearn all of the music that you have in your library. Um, literally just, you know, it's something that you don't want to stop listening to. It's, it's so good. So from there, um, I, you know, I continue to use these uh, quite a bit. I would say they're my workhorse. Um, and over time, I did uh, I did get the um, Hibby R3 Pro Saber um, little uh, DAP. And, uh, you know, I got this loaded up with FLAC files from all the CDs. So ripped into here. And um, absolutely, IMR and, and this DAP paired together for some reason um, are truly amazing. So about after a year, um, I'd say it was mid uh, 2020 that the uh, IMR R3H uh, came for sale on eBay. Um, really good deal on it. Uh, picked it up. Uh, the owner said it was uh, new, never used. Um, and perhaps they should have cleaned, cleaned out the earwax um, before they sent them. So uh, buyer beware if you're buying off of eBay. I think everyone knows that. So it's hard to tell with an IEM if it's been used or not used. Um, so anyways, I'm still, uh, over the moon with the, with the R3. So what do they sound like? Well, it's really hard to describe. When I first got the R2 red, I had the black filter, uh, and nozzle combination in, which is supposed to be the basiest version. And that probably would make sense. Why, 
while mowing grass, I could detect all this bass and all this uh, sound that was coming through. Uh, over time, uh, basically what I did, I just kept the nozzles uh, close to me every night that I could change them out the next day. Get a few days under each one so I could understand what they were doing. Um, you know, I, I ended up with a, a great pairing. Um, giving up some of the bass, but um, I think it's very open. Um, probably some of the widest sound stage that I've ever heard. Um, and again, it's hard to describe the sound because you have so many combinations of nozzles and uh, the filters or dampers, whatever they call them, that you can adjust the sound to whatever you want. Uh, but for me, the sound, uh, the first thing that I listen for in critical listening is the snare drum. And the snare drum is very forward with uh, both the R2 and R3H um, that it is something that I absolutely love. So it feels like with both these units, um, you know, if you go back to back, one being a flagship, one being kind of entry level, they're not that far apart. I would be happy living with the R2 Red for the rest of my life. Um, I don't feel a need owning either of these to buy any other IEM in the market. End game. Done. I don't feel like I want to. Um, and that's the first time in my life where I haven't felt like, oh, I need something more. You know, I want to change. Um, I'm so happy with these that I, that I don't really care to ever try anything more. Um, unless IMR um, comes up with something, you know, and I find a used market at a good price. Gladly get it. With these, it's really sound stage, layering. Each instrument has its own position, totally separated that you can hear the instruments individually. Um, you know, a lot of things get kind of clustered together and, and most high-end headphones and uh, everything else. So I think it's uh, one of the best things. So if you ever get a chance, try an IMR acoustics in your monitor. You'll love it. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. I love the comments. Add them in.